happening now. We're awaiting the president's big job speech tonight. And what do fellow Democrats want to hear from the president? Alaska Democratic Senator Mark Begich has some suggestions. In fact, he outlined some of them to a letter to the president, and he's joining us live from Capitol Hill. So, Senator, what is the maybe one thing you can share with us from your letter that you think the president should present to the American people tonight to turn around this job situation? Well, the, the, the challenge is there's no one single thing. As you know, in my letter, I laid out several, but just a couple out of there. I, I hope he talks about the idea of an infrastructure bank, which, if you leveraged properly, you can in create an incredible amount of resources out there to help build roads and bridges and water systems and sewer systems, which are falling apart and crumbling across this country, but also they're important for the private sector to work off of, meaning if we build the right road systems, the right water and sewer systems, private sector will attract to that and build from that. That's one suggestion. Do you Another think one, that's worth well, that, that would have the chance of actually passing not only you know, the House but the Senate as well? Well, you know, we, we got to have a little hope around here. If we keep talking that nothing's going to happen, then guess what? Nothing happens. I will tell you today in the Senate uh, Environment and Public Works Committee, the highway transportation bill to be extended till January of this year was passed out unanimous. So there's a lot of interest. Last night I met with 26 senators, Republican and Democrat, talking about some of these issues. And infrastructure seems to be one that everyone's kind of galvanizing behind. Also, uh, tax reform. This is another issue that there seems to be strong bipartisan support on. So I, I think we have heard, I've heard for months, and I think a lot of my colleagues now coming back from their August recess back home have gotten an earful from their constituents saying, you better get on the stick and do something and don't do it in such a way that you're creating new programs. Work with what you have and create some incentives and at the same time create an environment that the private sector can, can excel in. So with that, the I think meeting that you had motivation. last night the, uh, with the 26 senators, i got to ask, you said from, from both sides of the aisle, we don't hear about that happening very often. Uh, what did you guys do? Have a couple drinks? Share a cup of coffee? <laughs> how, how, did you, how did you get together and kind of talk about what's happening down in D.C.? Uh, a couple members uh, called the meeting and we all got together and literally just sat in a room uh, without staff there and just said, hey, you know, what, what do we need to focus on here and how are we going to do this? And what? I think there's a renewed, I'll tell you, you spend a month back home, uh, you get an earful. I don't care I'm when sure. I was back home, it doesn't matter where I traveled, I don't care if I was doing my own personal shopping to having my town hall meetings. People gave you an earful and we better get on the stick here. And I think people now realize, at least on the Senate side, that uh, we got to find some bipartisan activity. Well, Today that's promising. You saw it. It's promising to hear that, just getting together in a room without staff and maybe talking a little bit. Just a quick final <laughs> and question. And not throwing someone out. <laughs> yes, yeah. There you go. You know, just a quick final question here. One of the things that Valerie Jarrett mentioned about the potential plan that we're going to hear from the president tonight is that there would be the closing of loopholes and tax breaks, and often that applies to big oil and gas companies. Right. Oil is big business in Alaska. Would you be open to this plan if there was an infrastructure bank, uh, but it would be paid for or leveraged, as you put, uh, by, by getting rid of some tax breaks for, for oil companies? Well, I would say this, and I have not supported singling out one industry. What I have supported on my website, I have a bipartisan bill with Senator Wyden, Senator Coates on a broad sweep of tax reform. If it's a broad sweep, I'm happy to look at it. If it's just singling out one industry to penalize them, I'm not interested. But I will tell you, uh, what I heard a little bit on that clip was they're trying to broaden it because they heard from some of us that don't single out one industry. We all have to do our part. But do it in a way that's comprehensive and do it so it creates certainty to our business community. But I'll tell you, oil and gas industry is strong in Alaska, but also it can be strong for this country. I know you guys have talked about it on Fox many times, and we would just love to open up some areas in Alaska so we can explore and create an enormous amount of job potential for this country right here with our own resources. But it, I want to see a broad approach, not a single industry penalty. It'll be an interesting topic to continue to discuss as we look at energy Absolutely. policy moving forward. Next time you have one of those those meetings with the senators, well, we'd love an invitation just, just to put it out there, Senator. Next there time. There you go. Bring, bring, bring the beer. <laughs> bring the beer and we'll be there. Can't make any promises. We'll see what we can do. Uh, Senator Baggage, thank, thank you so much. Nice to see you.